Hey everybody, Tim Tiallo here and welcome to a very special edition of the Life After the Crown podcast. Hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, but it is now the week between Christmas and New Year's. And for many of you, that means you're starting to think about 2020 and what's ahead. I know in this time of the year, this is usually when I do most of my goal setting and and really planning out for the next year of what I want to accomplish. And so I wanted to take the time during this podcast, not to interview somebody else, but to really talk to you all about what you can do in 2020 to be super successful because I know a lot of you, you just went through your pageant seasons, you're thinking about, you know, what can I do differently next year? How can I get the outcome that I want, whether that's a state crown, a national crown, or maybe just placing or or just getting ahead of where you are at this point. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a five-step process that I've not only personally used, but I've uh, known and befriended many people who have used to become extremely successful in many different industries, many different professions, and even in their families and in their relationships. So let's start with this. If you have ever wanted to make a change, so let's say that, you know, I, I need to lose more weight this year. I want to do better in swimsuit or activewear, or you want to transform your relationship. Maybe you you want to date a guy or you want to improve the relationship that you're in, or you want to make a shift financially. You want to make more money. Um, and you find yourself making progress, but really you're not making enough progress. You either pull back or you never really get started. You get excited about it. You talk about it right now. It becomes a New Year's resolution, but you never really follow through. I think the one thing that you need to understand is if you're thinking about it and starting it, there's something there, but there's something that affects the way that you follow through, that it's affecting the quality of your life, and obviously it's not helping you attain your goals. So let's talk a little bit about that. There are two things that really control everything in your life. Uh, Every feeling, every emotion, every action, uh, what you're wearing today, whether or not you're going to turn this off in a few minutes or whether you're going to stick with me for, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. It's really controlled by two things. Number one, your beliefs. And number two, your values. So whatever you believe, if you think life is a waste of time, it really doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to go for anything. You're not going to lose weight. You're not going to push for the next level of your career, your finances or relationships or anything else. Beliefs control us, but so do our values. And some people, let's be honest, it's the whole Netflix and chill community. They value just kicking back. And then there's other people, the action takers, who value making it happen. Some people value their family the most. Some people value love the most. But you know what the real challenge is? is when you really want to make a difference in the world or you really want to do well for yourself or your family or you really want to do well with money, but simultaneously, you don't want to upset anybody. You want to be totally honest and at the same time, you want to make everybody happy. And when you have this conflict between what you want and what you think you can have, but then you have this other belief inside that says, you know, this is never going to work or it's never going to happen. That inner conflict is what keeps people from using all of their energy to get what they want. It's kind of like taking two steps forward and three steps back. So, look, people who succeed in anything, whether that's uh, pageants, relationships, careers, they all have this pattern of what they do to succeed. And it doesn't matter what the environment is. It doesn't matter where you're from, how much money you have, what you look like, what what gender you are. It doesn't matter. There is one thing that all of the people who succeed know. It is the fundamental driving factor that I'm asking really all of you to put forth in 2020. And that is, you got to know what you want or or what we'll call what your outcome is. Because if you're going to succeed in anything, whether it's, you know, winning a crown or becoming a model or making a significant change in the world around you, it's hard to succeed and hard to hit a target when you don't know exactly what it is. And as simplistic as this sounds, I mean, most people, let's be honest, they don't know what they really want. I mean, right now, as I'm saying this, between you and your own reflection in the mirror, could you honestly tell yourself exactly what it is that you want right now? For most of you, the answer is going to be no. I mean, you might know that, let's say you want to be famous or you want to be significant or you want to be validated by your followers or audience. But I mean, those are extremely broad goals. Let me give you a perfect example that I used in my own life uh, almost exactly a year ago, to be honest. When it came to this industry, pageantry, uh, and my work as a host and MC in it, I I really had to sit down and think about, you know, what is it that I'm really after here? Because I could just keep MCing pageants for the rest of my life. And success could really be defined in so many ways regarding my job. But I told myself, you know what? 
I don't want to just be a host. I'd like to start with a, a focus of being the best pageant host in the world. But again, that's still kind of a broad goal. How, how was I going to get there? So what I had to do is I had to dumb that down and come up with what's, what's going to be my first target. And I thought, you know what? Miss Teen USA uh, would be a great target because to me, that's the pageant. Um, the, it, it's a step in the door. It gets me to the Miss USA's and eventually to the Miss Universe jobs that are you know, currently occupied by bigger celebrities like the Lachey's and Chris Harrison and Steve Harvey. Uh, but how I got the job is a long story. And, and I'll honestly, I'll dedicate that to another podcast in the future. But I can tell you that because I knew exactly what the target was, my focus became intense and I knew everything that I would do from that moment all was targeted at getting that one specific job. And if I wouldn't have had that focus, I can assure you, you would have not seen me on that stage in Reno this past spring. So here's what I wanted to tell you. It's going to be difficult to get what you want when you haven't defined it. I've done it many times in the past. So the question you're going to have to continually ask yourself in the coming weeks is what exactly do I want my outcome or my goal to be? Because when you can come up with a question like, what should I do? You're going to end up with a long list. But as you get more exact in your focus and your goal, what's going to happen is you're going to begin to decide what you need to do in order to achieve that goal or that outcome. Clarity is power. You know, the more clear you can become about what it is you really want, the more power you're going to have. Because your brain is kind of like a heat-seeking missile. That's probably the best analogy I can give you. When that missile is launched, it knows what the target is. And when the target moves, it follows it. And your brain is very similar. When you decide exactly what it is you want, you start picking up information that you never would have picked up previously uh, before. Here, let me give you an example. Have you ever bought something like a car or maybe a certain outfit and then all of a sudden you see that car or that outfit everywhere? Well, I mean, here's what's interesting about that. The car and the outfit, they were actually already around you all the time, but you didn't notice it because there's a portion of your brain called the reticular activating system um, and it's responsible for one thing, and that is screening out 99% of what you see, hear, and feel in life. It's responsible for deleting most of our thoughts and most of the things that are going on around us. And that part of our brain, when it knows what you want, it makes you notice those things. So if you wanted that car, you suddenly see that car all the time. If you wanted that specific outfit, you see the outfit all the time. The reticular activating system tells your brain what to pay attention to. So when you say, I want this exact thing or this exact circumstance, it's going to start popping up in your focus. You're going to start recognizing people or things or uh, connections or you know ways that you could possibly get there that you didn't notice before. And when you know your outcome, you're ahead of 95% of the population. But that's still not enough. So let's talk about step number two. A lot of times... You know your outcome, but let's say you lose your drive. You know you want something, but you forget the most important thing is you got to know why you want it. You got to know your purpose because any person who is successful, and I mean really successful, knows exactly what they want, but they also know why they want it. And the reason you got to know why is, look, reasons come first and answers come second. So when you get enough reasons and you get a big enough why, you can figure out how to do just about anything. But you have to have purpose because purpose provides your drive. Now, if you know what you want and you know why, you are light years ahead of most people. But you got to do the third step that most people seem to avoid, and that is you got to take action. Uh, there's an old movie called The Secret, and The Secret was big on, you know, telling people that if if you just simply believe it, you can achieve it, which is very true, but what they left out and they didn't really talk about is you got to take action. I mean, you could sit there and stare at the wall all day at a vision board and look at it and say, I know this is what I want. It's going to come into my life. But if you don't take any actions to go after that goal, it's not going to happen. So when you know what you're after and you know why you want it and you begin moving yourself in the direction towards something you really, really want, the next thing that stops all of us from taking action is fear. And the number one fear that most people have is they don't want to fail. Because we feel like if we fail, you know, we won't be loved, we'll be rejected, we'll be hurt, we'll be judged. So what we're really afraid of is rejection. And, you know, from rejection, we lose love. But ladies, look, the truth of the matter is you can't fail unless you don't try. And you try something and it doesn't work and then you just learn from it. And it makes you better the next time that you try it again. So let's kind of review the steps so far. Number one, you got to know your outcome. Number two, you got to know why you want it. 
Number three, you got to take big time action towards it. And again, you'll be in the small percentage of successful people on the planet if you just do those three things. But there is a fourth step. You can take a lot of actions towards your goals and you can get caught up in a pattern. And you become so determined that basically you get what I like, you know, I'll call tunnel vision. So the fourth step that you have to be able to do to succeed so you don't get caught up in that same old pattern is you got to know what you're getting. And let me explain what that means. Uh, there's actually a word for this. It's called sensory acuity. It's the idea that you want to become acutely sensitive to whether what you're doing is actually working or not. You don't want to just say, you know, okay, I know what I want. I know why I want it. I'm just going to make it happen. And then it doesn't work. I mean, people do this all the time. They do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And as you've probably heard before, that's the definition of insanity. You can't do the same thing again and again and again and expect a different result when you consistently see that it's not getting results. But we, as human beings, tend to get caught up in our own patterns, and it's really tough to see past our own mental barriers. So what happens if you notice that what you're doing isn't working? You're taking action, but it's somehow not getting you closer to your goal or outcome. So that takes us to the fifth step. The fifth step is you got to change your approach. I mean, if look, if what you're doing is not working, you got to change it. And if you don't change your approach and it's still not working, then what do you do? You change it again. And if you tried that and it didn't work, what do you do? You change it again. And what if you tried that and it doesn't work? You change it again. Now, you're probably asking, well, how many times do I have to change it? The answer is as many times as it takes until you find out what works for you. You can't say to yourself, oh, man, I've tried everything. You and I know that's a bunch of bull crap. If you tried everything, you would have what you want. Well, I've tried everything. I've, I've tried a million things. Millions, really? Okay, number them. Name them. Oh, well, maybe tens of thousands. Okay, we'll name a thousand. Okay, well, maybe a hundred. Really? Okay, name a hundred. Okay, well, maybe it's like these two things over and over again that I did, but they don't work. Okay, finally, we're getting to some realization here. Gang, when we start saying, I've tried everything and we believe it, what do we do? We give up. And you know what it is? It's simply garbage. It's not true. So let's review. Here is your five-step success formula for 2020. And I really want you to spend either this week or maybe even the next few weeks, maybe after New Year's, whatever time that works for you to really sit down and think about how am I going to get to my goal this year is number one, you got to know what you want. And I mean exactly what you want. It can't be a broad goal. I can't just say I want to be famous in 2019 or I, I want to have a certain number of followers. You got you to get exact you got to talk about what the real detail of the target that you're going to go after is. Number two, you got to know why you want it. Okay, so I've heard many women come on the podcast or that I've talked to at, at shows and they'll say, well, I want to be Miss Universe. Why do you want to be Miss Universe? And sometimes the answer will be because I'll be famous. That's not enough. You will not get there. You will not win Miss Universe because you want to be famous. You've got to know a deeper purpose like, I want to win Miss Universe because I want to make a difference in kids in my life, you know. And the reason because of that is I grew up uh, poor and I grew up with uh, a handicap. And I want to address kids that dealt with a poor upbringing, that deal with a very specific handicap because I want to make a difference in their lives and let them know that there is somebody out there who knows what they go through and sees it and, and wants to help them believe and know that they can get through it just like I did. Okay, now we're getting focused on the why and the want, okay? Then number three is you got to take action. You want to win Miss Universe or Miss America or Miss USA, what is the first thing that you got to do? Now, some of you might say, well, I got to win the state pageant. Okay, well, let's refine it even a little bit more. How, do you, how are you going to win your state pageant? Did you finish runner-up last year? Did you even place? You got to look at the areas in which you didn't do well. Maybe call your state director and find out, you know, what were the judges' comments on why you didn't do well? And take action, you know, whether that's getting a better swimsuit body or it's really refining your interview skills or it's, you know, maybe finding another gown. I don't exactly know, but you're going to be able to figure out as you really dial in that focus that we talked about earlier with the reticular activating system. Once you start to really think about the exact thing that you want, you're going to start to notice things that you didn't notice before. Number four Know what you're getting. Remember, don't get caught up in old patterns. If you've been doing the same thing over and over and over for the last three years and you really haven't improved your position in where you finished in pageants, guess what? It's time to change your direction. Figure out a new way to attack it and go after that. Keep doing something different. 
It's number five. If nothing is working, simply change your approach until you get it. That's it. Anyone who does these five steps succeeds. And it's the way that you can succeed this year. But I'm telling you, the the last two are not, I wouldn't say, quite as important as the first three. But number one is dial in the focus. And I think that's where many of you need to start today. I know I had to do it last year, you know, because I really didn't have a focus in my pageantry hosting career. I was just doing it because I loved it and I was really enjoying helping girls and just, you know, entertaining people and having fun. But once I dialed in a focus, you know, things stepped up real quick and you all saw me stand on the stage there in Reno to host Miss Teen USA. And I'm telling you, you can do the same thing on the other side of the pageant. You can stand on the stage and wear the crown. You can stand on the stage and move on to to compete in Miss Universe. It can happen for you. You just got to know what it is. And the number two is probably just as important. Why? Why do you want this whole thing? And if it's a shallow reason, at least be honest with yourself and say that. You know, I just want to be famous. I just want to be popular. I just want to feel like people care about me. At least it's a start to know that. Now, those might not be deep enough whys in order for you to succeed, but at least it's going to give you clarity on maybe you need to find a better why. Or maybe this isn't what you need to be doing. Maybe pageantry isn't, you know, where your why really is going to make a difference. Maybe your why will make a difference in charity or a different career path or something like that, but at least you're going to find out. And then number three, equally as important, take action. You got to go get out there and start doing things. Make a list. After you know the target and the why, literally make a list of the first three things that you're going to do that next week. Okay, I'm going to reach out to this person. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to go practice this. Figure out what those things are and then take the action. And then number four and five, you know, again, they're not quite as important as those first three is keep trying. But if it's not working, try something different and try something different and try something different. There are girls who, you know, that took them seven to eight years to win their crown in their state. But you know what? I love it because they didn't give up. They were persistent. And they kept changing their approach and they finally won. Good for them. And I want to be able to say good for you as well. And I want to hear about your stories this year. You know, if you're having trouble figuring out what those things are, feel free to reach out to me. I'll do the best I can to help you. But I think the one thing that I would love to hear from each one of you is when you do apply these things this year and you figure out what they are and you go for them and you achieve them, those are the stories that I want to hear. You can guarantee I'll be having you on the podcast if that's you because Those types of stories are the things that inspire everybody else who's listening to this podcast as well. Stories inspire. Stories of achievement. Stories of overcoming. Stories of dealing with issues and adversity and getting through it and still getting to where you want to get to. I guarantee you that's the stuff that inspires each one of us. Me, you, and everybody listening. And so if that can be you this year, I want to hear from you. So good luck to you in 2020. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Happy New Year to you. And we'll see you next week.